Good afternoon again on a marathon today. I think I've made three short videos. Um, I thought I'm going to do a tips and tricks video because I just have so many people asking me what I use and how I do this and how I do that. So if I can direct them to a video and try and fit everything in that I do. I do understand I'm living in Australia so my products and brands are different than the US. Things that I might use uh, obviously may not be the case in in, uh, in the US or Europe, wherever, but I'm, I can only go on what I can get my hands on and give you advice about. So I'm not sure whether these things will work with all kinds of paint brands in different countries but i'll try and give you um just go through some things what i do anyway so i am going to make up some paints today just to show you how i make up my paints and the consistencies so i will do that for you but first of all i'll go through products okay my most favorite pouring medium at the moment that I pre-make up is Elmer's glue and water. So what I do is when I've got a nice full full um, container of Elmer's glue, I'll use one of my older containers and pour what is approximately, because I'm not into measuring, 70%, I'll pour 70% of the Elmer's glue into a container then I'll add what I consider is about 30%, obviously put the lid on and give it a really good shake to mix it up. Then that's my like four litres of, uh, which is a gallon uh, American of pouring medium. I mean, it's the glue all and I just find that out of all of the different ones I've tried, it's just the best. But the only thing we have trouble in Australia is buying this because it's coming from America and not uh, hardly any Australian suppliers have it, which is crazy. Um, you'd think that the big stores, Target, Bunnings, um, Woolworths, would all start to stock it because there's such a big uh, market for it. Anyway, so I mostly use Elmer's glue. If um, the other product I do use if I'm doing a, a cloud pour or um, I do sometimes just use it for is obviously the flow troll um, which I think you can get most places um, so I just use the flow troll added to paint again um, the other little thing that I because I'm trying to find different glues that work the same as Elmer's that I can buy in Australia I recently bought this little for Australian Duramax which is an Australian brand admittedly I only got it in 120ml because I was trying it that gave me uh, the beautiful effect and gave me lots of tiny little really nice cells just like the Elmer's so I'm yet to do the research to get it in a big bigger bottle so I'm trying that so okay all of those are pouring mediums and you're and I certainly do know that the Al uh, Elmer's glue oil pouring medium that I make doesn't go well with all paints. Lots of American um, paint pourers have said that their brands over there don't, just doesn't mix nicely. So obviously you've got to find what works better for you. Uh, another thing that, okay, so that's pouring medium. I have used this for quite a while now. This is an Australian made an Australian brand so I buy what's available and it's very reasonably priced just over six dollars uh, is the Helmar I get so many requests there is Helmar has got a website um, that you can order from them uh, Australian website so I would just click on www.helmar oh can't read the rest haven't got any glasses on <laughs> well it will come up once you write www.helmar and they have got an american site too i noticed when i was on there the other day ordering some so this silicon is fantastic and you only have to put you know mostly two 
three or four at the tops drops into uh, your paint mix. Um, so that is excellent. Do like Helmar's products. The other thing is my butane torch that lots. So what I do is I just buy the butane you can get from any camping shop, hardware shop, and they come, you can get about six canisters of the butane gas for less than ten dollars they come like this so this particular one then i order these off the internet the different self-igniting heads for them so that one's the same it's just got a button um, and these just fit on the top of your butane it's got a little rivet there so just make sure you and then you light line line up press and turn and then it attaches the can to your but yeah just need to do it in a well ventilated area um, but yeah these are less probably 10 12 dollars off eBay I get them so I suppose you could get them wherever you are they're just self igniting and then you just Ooh, you just buy your butane gas any anywhere you can get it and uh, it lasts quite a long time the gas so okay those are those little things I wanted to go through with you um, also I use this masking tape um, the blue one I'm not sure if it's the same in each country I just use this on the back of my canvases um, to tape up so you don't have the dirty overrun on the back of your canvas. So just let me show you what I would do if it was just a canvas. I just tape the back of the canvas on the very edge like there. This one's still sealed in its pack, but that's what I do. Just if you want to, if you're doing a nice canvas and you're doing it to sell, then it is nice to to, to take the extra time and um, put that bit of tape on the back because when you finish doing it painting and it's dry you can just pull it off and it leaves a nice clean back canvas so much more professional if you're selling uh, other thing is the push pins which I get they do sell them on eBay as well is the push pins for canvases you know if you're using a big canvas or a small you can hammer the push pins in the back and then obviously they stand up nicely you don't have to use lots of trays and things so the push pins are really good and you get those they're jumbo push pins well, I hope I'm staying in the frame for you all uh, jumbo push pins and you can get those from any office supply place so that's another good little tool I always have a supply of balloons which you can get from any cheapy shop for embellishing balloon kissing so I always have my supply of balloons because I do do like my balloon kissing I must say uh, another little tool that's handy which I mean this was less than ten dollars is your palette knife set so ten dollars for these are Montmart ones um, I, you can also order those off eBay, but I just got those from just a local um, discount store. So it's always handy to have some tools for doing either um, just wiping paint over or doing effects. So that's a good little tool uh, to have in your arsenal of tools for, okay, these um, paddle pop sticks or, well, these I get, I found a lot cheaper and a much nicer quality wooden spatulas. Uh, these are waxing spatulas, so they're thicker they, and they don't bend or break. I order these online from Lycon. Uh, they're, yeah, I'm not sure if they're, huh, there you go, made in China, but they're www.lycon.com.au. Um, so that's who I just, I think they're oh, like $4 for a hundred, really nice quality. So they, I, you know, I ordered like a box of them, so I've got them. They're a really good tool. 
obviously your puppy pee pads, which I get off eBay and like 200 a pack. Excellent for putting on your surface so it absorbs the paint. That's another uh, great little thing. Uh, buy your gloves in a box of gloves. You can, um, if you're diligent, you can wash your hands thoroughly when you're finished and dry your hands on a towel, take your gloves off carefully and can reuse them if you so choose to. So that is another little thing. And obviously your cups you can get from anywhere, wherever, or if you want to be um, eco-friendly, you can use the discount shop shirt, sell lots of um, plastic drinking cups for children and you can use those for and you just rewash and you just wash them i'm lucky here because i don't get any of my wastewater going into the public sewer septic or whatever you call it we have um we have it just running into a paddock into a hole in the ground so um because we're not on town water or septic here we have our own so that's another thing. Right, I think I've gone through a few of those things. The other things I get asked for is my um, swipe tool, which are plastic file dividers that you get this pack of 10. I, well, I got these on special look for $3, so that was a bargain. But I think they're less than $10. So they, um, they're plastic file dividers. So you do get that surrogate you know, where you put them in the file, um, this edge is flat. Sometimes it'll come with a little file thing, you just cut that off flat. I don't, you could cut the other end, but I don't bother, I just use that end to grip. Best swipe tool, really are the best, so much better than paper towel, spatulas, really, really good. And those can be rewashed and rewashed, and they just last ages. So that's another good thing. Lots of people asking me what I use to coat my paintings. Um, I am going through different products at the moment, testing them. So all different things, like to put a gloss coating on a painting. Um, this one was actually done with, I'm still trying to find a perfect one. I have recently used Artelia and that has cracked on me. Um, so not happy with that one but my favorite at the moment is or has been for a while and I keep coming back is the Mod Podge okay it's a gloss luster gloss luster luster there you go so what I usually do is put some in a container and I add a little dribble of water at a time uh, add in the water so it's thinner thin down um, probably just one part water to like four parts mod just a little bit of water just to just to um water it down so i just do you know three or four thin coats and always leave i just always leave 24 hours in between but this gloss luster from mod podge i just really like it because that hasn't cracked on any of my pieces yet so that's worked quite well um so i do like that Okay, um, I'll just get down to do, just mix in a few paints for you so I can give you um, the consistency that I, so okay, this is, I'm using Global and that's what I mostly use, but um, they recently changed in Australia, the Global brand to El Dorado, which I'm not sure about yet. Um, I'm hearing a few of the poorer say that it's a lot less creamy and runny. I do like um, Byron paints too. They are not so thick and creamy as, but they still are really deeply pigmented and really nice paint. And they still go with the pouring medium that I uh, pre-make up of the Almas Glue. So they're an Australian brand and you will find um, Bob McDonald in Brisbane, uh, I think it's called Art, oh I'm not 100% sure but I don't think they send out of um, Australia at this point, um, so there is Byron, 
I did try, try some of the apple berry from America that somebody gave me from America. That does not mix well at all, apple berry with glue, Elmer's glue. I tried it, it was just a big mess. That did mix fine with Floetrol and a bit of water. So that one, but I, I'm not real keen on that paint at all. And the other paint that I really like is a nice, really nice quality is the Chroma A2. So obviously it's a lot more um, financially beneficial to buy one or two litres at a time. Um, so the, this is Chroma A2 heavy bodied acrylic. Um, this is really, yeah, really nice paint. It's not as happy <laughs> being mixed with Elmer's glue oil, but if I do a weaker solution of the Elmer's glue oil, it, it tolerates it nicely. But it, it does work well with Floetrol. So that's another brand that I use. And again, just the cheaper brand. Um, if I'm doing just things that I'm doing for test pours is the Montmartre two litre studio acrylic. It's really thick and creamy, just as good as, as the um, uh, global, um, but probably not as deeply pigmented, but works really well if you, you're doing a small canvas. And all this thing about you know, if you're selling your canvases, you should be doing this and you should be do, you know, who, who each to their own, because if you do a canvas for sale and you give it a coat of, uh, whether it's gloss or matte, that's archive quality, it, it's gonna last a number of years. You're not selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, you buy a leather lounge for thousands of dollars and it fades and you can't, you know, it's don't stress over the small stuff is what I say and what people try to get on the bandwagon, tell them don't do this and don't use glue and don't do that. Look, do whatever works for you, what you enjoy doing. Don't stress over it. That's what I say. Uh, okay, so I'll just get into mixing a bit of paint for you. Okay, I don't wanna make this too long, so. I don't measure or weigh anything, so I'll put, I'm gonna make, so that's about, okay. I'm putting about, I'd say that's about two centimeters, two centimeters in the bottom or of my cup, this size. Okay, so what I do then is, I always make sure I oh, give my glue all and, water a good shake it doesn't matter about the bubbles because another thing that i do is i always make my paints up at least 24 hours before i'm going to so i'm just going to put double or oh, it's probably a bit over double what what the paint is and then i stir so it's better to put less in first rather than more and then i just stir I just stir it up till I feel that the consistency is right. If it's on a little bit on the thick side on the day that I make it, I don't worry because when I come to use it, I will add a little bit more pouring medium to it. So that's not too, that's not too bad. So I'm trying to give you consistencies. See, it's like, it says it's like when you, just see so obviously you need really good stir really good stir up and it's just like pouring cream it's still got some body in it but it's certainly not gluggy and having trouble coming off the um, spatula so that's about what I would pour if I want the cells to hold their shape. If I want, like I've been doing recently, I like the cells to morph and, and expand, especially if I do a swipe because I love how they morph and then the swipe color just acts as an outline around all these nice big chunky um, cells that have morphed. So that's the consistency. 
I would do. Uh, and then this little um, polystyrene thing that we had in packing, my husband put some um, drill holes in it or whatever you call them, or for a hole, hole saw or something, I don't know. It just helps me keep the paint and from knocking it over. So with my Helmar silicon, um, one, oh, it's not coming, two. I don't want to put any more, I won't put any more than two in that. So that's half a cup of paint. Certainly not any more than two. It, it, I just find you don't need it. It still sells up the same. I think it's because with the pouring medium that I, it just works really well. So that's, yeah, that's just a nice creamy consistency, but it's not, it's still just a little tiny, a little trace as you do a circle. You can see a little trace for a second or two. That's uh, a nice uh, pouring medium for holding the cells and getting cells within cells. So I'll just do one more. I'll do the um, El Dorado turquoise. And you can see already this is a runnier um, paint mixture. A runnier consistency altogether so I obviously won't need so much of my pouring medium in that particular one so again best to add just I just slowly add it because if I give you weights and measurements for your particular paint brand it might be completely different so what I'm, I'm just adding it slowly so i've only added about double and that's way too thick for this already it's like yeah that's too thick so it's better to do it slowly and just keep adding than going and pouring oh well we need four ounces of that and then you have eight ounces of that because it doesn't i just find it better it works this way because if you're just adding slowly then you can because not even if they're the same brands they don't always require the same amount of pouring medium but if you want to write down what works best for you if you know that your turquoise by El Dorado needs uh, double uh, two times pouring medium to one times paint then write write down whatever works I don't write anything down sorry so that is about Again, the same, that's the same if I want it to hold the cells. So you do, like pouring cream, you do see, I'm hoping you can see, it does have a little trace when you do that in your cup. So that's for pouring, that would be to a pour if you want it to hold the cells. Now, if I wanted it to go a little bit I just add a bit more of my pouring media, a little bit more. It's still got to have a consistency to it, but it might be just a slight bit runnier. If you can see, it runs off the spatula quickly, you know, more quickly, and it doesn't leave such a trace. If I was going to do it for a pour that I wanted the cells to stretch out and morph. So they don't look like cells in the end. They morph into, they might look like a leaf, a butterfly, a dragonfly, whatever. Just a little bit more pouring medium. So, and again, just, I'll only add two drops because it really doesn't need any more. One, two. Just two drops of silicon to that uh, size or that amount of paint. And even if these cups were filled to the top, the most I would add is three to four drops. It just doesn't need it. Still get the cells, it just reacts lovely. Um, it's all good. Okay, so I think that's about gone through anything. If there's anything else that you can think of that you might need to know, I'll try and do it in a video because I'm sorry if I can't get back to everyone because um, three or four thousand people messaging or asking I just can't get back uh, to everyone so it's better to do it this way 
that thank you very much uh, for watching and if you could please subscribe um, it doesn't cost you anything and it, it um, you'll be given well you can ask for notifications if you want to be the first to see my videos or whatever but you don't have to ask for notifications um, but subscribing would help me uh, thank you very much my acrylic art by Jilly Cube on Facebook if you want to join or just follow me on Facebook um, yeah just tick like and then you'll always be the first to get my videos or advice or tips and tricks thank you very much for watching